Jim Plunkett did it. Jim Plunkett did it. He went to a, 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 Hi, my name is Alfonso Salazar. I worked uh, for 34 years at the post office in San Jose. Where was the post office well, located? St. James Park Station it was the most recent one that I worked at, but I've worked at various post offices. Um, but that was the last place I was working at. And you and, remember Jim Plunkett's parents? Well, I didn't, didn't, I only had heard of them um, through the customers that would come to the to the window when I would help them um, with their goods, with their, you know, sending out their packages. They would, re they would recall, they say how beautiful the post office looked and they would remember that inside the lobby that they would have a newspaper stand there. And even though that they were blind, Jim Plunkett's parents were blind, that they were able to succeed with their business there and help the people there uh, get through their day, you know, selling them the newspapers. And so it was good to, to work there at the post office and hear these kind of stories about Jim Pluckett's parents. Hi, my name is Carl Soltero. I'm a member of the La Raza Historical Society. I have had a lifelong interest in sports and I've lived in San Jose since 1971, but I've been able to hear stories and meet many great athletes from years before. Uh, for example, Eddie Chavez grew up in East San Jose and was a nationally known boxer. I forget what his weight is. Uh, you also have the Romero brothers. You have Steve and Albert Romero. They were from uh, Lincoln High School. And Stevie had a chance to uh, box with a championship, but he lost the fight. And after that, he got away from boxing. His brother Albert had 20 professional fights as a light heavyweight. Uh, in addition to that, other great athletes that maybe should be recognized and remembered are the Candelaria brothers from Yerba Buena High School. Albert was a left-handed pitcher who could throw the ball really, really hard. His initial claim to fame was he played against Barry Bonds in the 1980, I think it was, or 81 uh, CCS Baseball Championship. Unfortunately, they lost by a score of 2-1. to one. And his brother Gilbert was also on that team. Albert, as I said, was a left-handed pitcher. He was drafted by the Atlanta Braves or the New York Mets. It escapes me right now. He ended up, ended up injuring his arm, so he made it as far, I think, as A ball or double A ball. So he had a career that, unfortunately, was curtailed by injury. Uh, another set of brothers are Paz Rocha and Robbie Rocha. Uh, Paz Rocha was somewhat older than Robbie, but uh, he was a junior college all, uh, star in, in basketball, and he had a statewide reputation. Uh, his younger brother, Robbie, I played flag football with him. He was a fantastic athlete. And his claim to fame was his senior year, he won championships in football, baseball, and basketball. So, yes, many unknown and unrecognized uh, athletes. Eddie Chow was, was, uh, attended James Lake High School. Here we have the exhibit of Overfelt High School and James Lake. James Lick and Overfelt have a rich tradition of sports. Uh, of course, when you hear James Lick, you hear the name Jim Plunkett. And there's others. For example, Chon Gallegos was Jim Plunkett's coach in high school. Chon Gallegos went on to be a quarterback at San Jose State. I'm 5'10", 180. He was my height. 
He was the quarterback at San Jose State, and they culminated their season with a 7-3 and three record, beating two West Coast teams, which was unheard of at that time, considering that San Jose State was a smaller school. But under the leadership of Chon, they were able to finish in seven, uh, with a 7-3 and three record. Chon went on to play for the Oakland Raiders in the early 60s for a couple of years before he went back to teaching. And that's where he ended up coaching Jim Plunkett in football. And of course, Jim Plunkett went on to have a very successful career, National League Football Rookie of the Year, two-time Super Bowl winner, an All-American, uh, won the Heisman Trophy in college. And I am connected with him indirectly because in Delano, where I grew up, his uh, center at Stanford was uh, named Dennis Sheehan, and I played high school football with him. So that's my connection. Overfeld is another school who never got any credit for producing great sports teams. Uh, they have a rich tradition of uh, baseball, football, and wrestling especially. For a number of years in the mid-late 70s until the 80s, Overfeld had a, a, a wrestling program that was recognized statewide. And their football team, they were always undersized, but they were known to be very game and they would give you a hard fight. And the baseball team had a number of players who had chances to uh, uh, play baseball in the minor leagues professionals. They didn't make it all the way, but hey, most of us don't even get that close. So Overfield has a rich tradition of sports, and uh, the tradition continues with them. Yes, uh, in the early 50s up through the 70s, San Jose was uh, a mecca for boxing. And Rasa came out in droves to watch their favorite boxers, such as Eddie Chavez from here, and other boxers. Uh, they often trained. They often trained at the uh, Babe Griffin Gym downtown San Jose, and from there they went out and made a name for themselves often. And so, yeah, the tradition of boxing is a very rich one, especially for Rasa. They used to come out all the time to watch the pleitos, as they would say.